Welcome to Time Bender Talks, the ultimate destination for professional photographers. This weekly podcast is hosted by Peggy McArthur, a certified professional photographer with over 30 years experience and the creator of the Headshot Strategist Certification Program. Peggy interviews a diverse range of experts in business, branding, marketing, networking, and photography. So whether you've been doing this for years or you're just starting out, we've got you covered. Oh, and don't forget to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on our latest episodes filled with tips, insights, and lots of fun. I am so excited. I am here with Bill and we are going to have a lot of fun today. Bill, tell us a little bit about you. Tell us um, what the CCO stands for and, uh, and, and just help us get to know you a little bit. Sure. Well, let's see, what can I tell you about me? I, uh, I've been involved in sales and marketing positions my whole career. And, um, during that time, I've sold everything from, uh, well, my, my first year in business, I was a top salesman. Sold my house, sold my car. You know, it, it seemed like it at the time, right? Back in the <laughs> To early. make ends meet, right? <laughs> right. And uh, actually, I just met somebody who that was their claim to fame this week, too. So I kind of uh, appreciate it. But no, I've, I've been involved. Uh, I started out selling life insurance uh, for the great Northwestern Mutual many years ago. Um, did a lot of time in the, <laughs> sounds like the penitentiary, but no, it was the, it was the financial services industry and I got letters after my name and all that kind of good stuff. And now I just mess up QuickBooks with the best of them. I sold Sandler sales training because if you can sell sales training, you know how to sell. At least <laughs> I think claims they make. And then I got involved with marketing with duct tape marketing and I became a duct tape marketing consultant with the great John Janch at that time out of Kansas City, Missouri, and now he's out of Colorado. And um, then I decided that being on planes Sunday night and coming back Friday evenings was not really an ideal thing. And um, I decided to settle down and become a little country doctor of sales and marketing for small companies. So helping smaller businesses figure out how to generate the numbers they need by the end of the year is what I love to do. And that's what I've been doing ever since. Well, I, I love that. And this month we are talking about strengthening communication. We're talking about the importance of communication. And of course, we're focusing today on networking. And I love um, in, in on your on your website or, or some somewhere I read this that you said you you strive to meet 10 new people every single month. And I was like, that's it. That is my new thing. I love that. I think it's so important to build relationships and meet people. So how did, how did that kind of, how did you come about that? Wow. Well, that's really, uh, there's all kinds of cool stories behind these things, but that's actually the premise that I make to a client that I, and I, and, and it's interesting, Peggy, because um, we actually guarantee we will help you be able to introduce or get introductions to 15 or more people, not 10, 15 who look like your best clients and can really understand value, desire, and afford the services that you offer. But I found that when I was first meeting with people and I said 15, they went, yeah, no, 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 that's not gonna happen. Now you're, you're, nah, now you're hyperbole. So I said, well, could you believe maybe 10? Yeah, okay, that's a stretch, but I could see 10. So I go with 10 publicly, but once we start working together, I raise my own bar to say, no, no, we're not gonna settle for that. We're going for 15 or more. And it's all done by using a system which helps you figure out how to do that by a series of actions that you take consistently, conscientiously, and every darn week. And if you do that every week, you get 15 or more introductions a month, if you wish. Although a lot of people, it turns out after a while, and I'm thinking some of your audience probably go, you know, I don't have the capacity to take on that much more business. That's a terrible problem to have to have. But if you don't have it, then we have a system to get you there. And then you can decide, well, I'm, I could live with only 10, but you know, you need to replenish the blood supply no matter what, but it's a process that helps you maintain your business and keep it going. And you're never in a position where you're going, oh, where's my next client going to come from? Would you say that you're passionate about what you do? No, I could care less. No, of course I'm passionate. <laughs> you know, I mean, this is kind of what I've been led to for my whole life. 
my mom started out um, in real estate and stayed in it for over 40 years. So I kind of grew up as a real estate brat and I used to ask her, I said, Ma, how do you get your clients? And she said, well, Billy, you know, even when she was 90, I was still Billy, you know, that works. <laughs> and she said, uh, well, you know how every week we hold a party? And I said, yeah, and my mom, I know we grew up in Connecticut. So there were a lot of old New England houses that were bigger than average and some might call them mini mansions or something. They weren't that they were to me, but she could have a party for 50, 60 people easily. Nobody was getting crowded and she had enough room to put them in. And she said, you know how we have the party every week? And I said, yeah. And she said, and I go, oh, everybody, Peggy's here. Peg, come put your coat down. And then I'd drag you and I'd put you in a group. And, yeah. And then I'd say, uh, Peggy, this is Arlene and there's George and there's Tom and there's our, our other friend, uh, Allison. And uh, you guys talk amongst yourselves when you get through with her. Uh, introduce her to another group. And by the way, the food's over there, the bar's over there, and oh, I think I hear the doorbell, and then I take off. I said, yeah, I know how you do that. She goes, well, and then I'm on the phone on Mondays, because this is pre-internet days, right? And right. She, I'm calling up, and I'm saying, hey, Peggy, did you have a good time at the party? Did you meet everybody you wanted to meet? Was there anybody you didn't meet you wanted to, and I could help you set up a time to meet with them now? So my mom was like in the middle of everybody's business. And it was in a good way. And so she, and along the way, she, she'd say, you know, what can I do to help you? And she said, so now, whenever they or someone they know says, I need to buy or list a property, mama comes to mind, and that's how I get my clients. Huh. So I learned to adapt what she taught me or I observed as a youngster when I was growing up with her. And I just kind of realized that if you're the host of the party or the hostess, as a case may be, and you look out for your guests, they will take care of you. And that's what I developed a system to do. And I share that with people who are usually in some kind of a professional problem solving field. So if they're a coach, a consultant, an advisor, um, and it could be a realtor, it could be an attorney, an accountant, it could be a financial advisor, they have to build relationships and those relationships will build business for them if they do it right. So that's the story in a nutshell. I love that. And I, even before, before internet days, I would have, you know, I did a lot of families and babies and newborns. And I would always, I had a big pin board, pegboard where people would leave their business cards. Mm -hmm. And I always knew who did what, and we'd always talk about that. So when a client came in and they're like, yeah, I, I've got to get my house roofed. I'm like, I have a roofer here, call, call so-and-so. And I was yeah. always hooking up my clients. And then um, there was about a, a eight year period of time where I had a thing on my website. You went to Portraits by Peggy. I'm not Portraits by Peggy anymore, but back then I was. And there was a page where it was like, it was like a, I don't, I don't even know what it would compare to, but maybe, maybe like a, like a, a Angie's list or something, you know, it was like all these, you know, all my clients would, I would say, put your, put your business on here, what you do. Cause you know, people are looking for good people. And you know, if you're, we're all hanging out. We're all, we're all good people, you know, and I would promote. And to this day, I have lived in Los Angeles for over seven years now. And I still have people from San Diego that will call me and say, Hey, do you, do you happen to know a plumber? And I'm like, mm -hmm. hold on. And I do um, still to this day, but I'm that I'm still top of mind. And what does that mean? Well, when they know, when they need pictures, they obviously are thinking about me. And when someone says, "Hey, I need pictures," oh, Peggy, because I'm already there. Th they know I'm the go-to person, and it's so important to to build those those connections. And you know, I, I, that's why I'm passionate about it. I think yeah. that is uh, probably the secret sauce to my success um, oh. is just being not just not just you know, the photographer that you can count on, but the person you can count on. Yeah, I, I have to give you credit for something that's kind of subtle, but I, I hope that uh, nobody misses it who's listening. The, um, the, the ability to say, oh, yeah, I know somebody. I mean, you could technically in the old days, especially have gotten that out of a, a directory like the Yellow Pages or anything, right? I mean, you could be listed. What you did, Peggy, was you gave the implicit endorsement. You did the vetting of who can you trust? If you trust Peggy, 
I trust this person who can put in swimming pools. I trust this landscaper is going to make your home, you know, do property leverage and sell for more after they come in and do their job. You were vetting experts on behalf of your clients and contacts. And that is actually more valuable than just being able to go to a directory and see people listed by category. You were doing some judging ahead of time, screening, cultivating, pruning, weeding, and you said, these are the best of the rest, and I'm putting my reputation on the line with you because of it. So, you know, that's a powerful subtlety that sometimes is missed in this whole connection game. But it's really something that if you do it properly, it will greatly add value to so many people when you do it. And the other thing that you you, you shouldn't forget, not only am I connecting people, but let's say I took... I took um, Fred and Amy's family pictures, right? And Amy mm -hmm. is an artist. And then I took, um, you know, Kevin and, and Beth's pictures over here. And they're looking for someone to, you know, do a big mural on their thing. And I connect them over here. Not only do I give them value, but mm -hmm. they just paid me a lot of money to do their family portraits. And I just sent them a paying customer. Oh, well, I want to keep working with Peggy because she's going to also send me money. Like, this is a good investment. Not only am I getting these images that I love, but I'm also getting new clients out of the deal. Like, it's a reinforcement on both ends of the deal. Not only am I showing them value because I'm able to give them the thing they need, but this other person, they get cash. You know, they get money and they get a pay. They're getting what they want out of the deal, too. You know, yeah. I, I swear to God, you're not a shill in the audience, nor am I for you. But what you just did was reveal another little subtlety. And that is when you're in the course of talking with people and someone says, oh, by the way, do you know someone who? Yeah, I, yeah, I do. Now, after you've made a good connection, you've got two people who are totally more in love with you than they were before. And if they're not complete raving boorish jerks, they're going to say, so Peggy, how do I repay you? And I'm sure you have an answer for that question, but that's the whole thing about the more you give out, the more you get coming back. And that's a beautiful thing when you start practicing it on a regular basis with all your people. I always tell this story and people that have listened to my podcast or gone through my program are like, oh God, you're, she's going to talk about the carpet cleaner again. And I am, I'm going to talk about the carpet cleaner again. This was by far the most um, effective power partnership ever. I oh, photographed um, maternity, newborn, three months, six months, nine months, and a year. That was my bread and butter. That was my main focus. And a carpet cleaner was having a baby. I did their maternity pictures. Well, guess what? He's in all sorts of homes and he's like, oh, you could use a picture on this wall. And he would send me people and people that come in, to get that have kids, what do they need? They need their carpets cleaned. And I tell you, when <laughs> when I tell you, we sent each other so much business. I don't even oh. know who profited most out of it because it was literally just a nonstop. And you know, it's and you know, it's the things that you just building relationships. These are he he came in and cleaned my studio carpets. That's why I knew I liked him. <laughs> yeah, you know, and so. you were product to the product. Yeah. And, and, uh, you know, I did his family portraits and, you know, he was, you know, over the years, I think that he just came and cleaned my carpets and I just did his pictures <laughs> because we sent each other so much money that I don't think we, uh, you know, by the end of this, you know, I don't think we paid each other. We just, you mm -hmm. know, it was so much money flowing in there. It was yeah. such a great, a great partnership. And the, you, you can't think like if if I was sitting down and I was talking to someone that's OK, who who would be my ideal, um, you know, partner in this? I wouldn't referral partner. I would have never come up with a carpet cleaner. Mm -hmm. But you have to be willing to just build authentic relationships. Just True. Build, and they build have to be willing to work with you, too. That's the other part of it. But that that's a beautiful thing the way you did that, because you had a similar audience, but completely different services. So there was no competitive problem. And there was only a benefit of one and one equals five. Brilliant. <laughs> yeah. Brilliant. I love it. 
Exactly. Exactly. So tell me when you decided this was your passion and you were not going to go work for someone else. You were going to go out and do this and, and, and make a living doing what you were passionate about. Uh, well, I've always done it. So <clears throat> I guess I didn't formalize it for most of my working career. I'm like I said, I've done other things, been in sales marketing, used the skills, but didn't offer it as a standalone item onto itself until, oh, I don't know, maybe the last 10 years or so. So that's, that's, that's how long I've been formally holding out with a program we call get more preferrals now. And a preferral is a term we came up with for not really a referral, because I really, I found that get, asking people for referrals is problematic. Um, it's not so bad if you're, uh, you know, in the, in the photography business, but if you're in financial services or you're a marriage counselor or, you know, you're a proctologist, not that they have a problem with asking for referrals, but, you know, if what you're doing has any kind of a social stigma to it or it's awkward to admit to, then you have to start asking people to be psychic. Like, who do you think would want to have a picture of their family? You know, I don't know. But, you know, if you asked, who do you know who has young kids? Mm -hmm. they, you know anybody? Yes, I do. Or no, I don't. It's it's much cleaner. And you also don't have to get into making a judgment like, yeah, you know, I, I had a neighbor when we first moved in this nice neighborhood. And, uh, you know, I thought they were the picture perfect couple. Well, it turned out, you know, he's having an affair with his young you know, secretary and the whole house, the kids, everything just blew up. She got divorced. They had to sell the house. Everything went down the tube. So I learned a lot of people don't like to make judgments. And they don't like trying to be psychic, saying, I don't know who would want what you do. But if you ask for a characteristic, like, do you know anybody who has young kids? Yes, I do. No, I don't. Do you know anybody who drives a red Mercedes? Uh, yes, I do. No, I don't. And you're going to at least know that somewhere in that person's sphere of influence is the kind of a person who correlates with factors that other past clients have had and therefore may be a better than average opportunity for you to get introduced to. And at some point, if not today, then at some point in the future, they will develop a need. And if you're the person who cultivates that relationship and nurtures that relationship, you'll come to mind as the, hey, let's call Helen Dora and see what we can do. She probably can get rid of this house for us. That's what happens. So, you know, that, I don't know if that gives you a little bit of a perspective on how we get there, but that's what I've been doing for pretty much my whole career. And it works. So this month we're focusing on communication. So I, okay. I have to I have to bring up communication. Let's talk about why it's so important for professional photographers, anyone, but of course this podcast is designed for photographers, for them to have good communication skills in order to run their dream business. Where does communication feel, find its way into this? So can I ask you a question? When you, because that term communication is like saying healthcare. You know, it could uh -huh. be a therapist, a neurosurgeon. There's a whole spectrum there. Are you talking about the messaging you're using or the systematic, consistent connecting you're making with somebody by communicating? Which way do you want to go? So that's the fun thing about this podcast. I ask very broad questions <laughs> and I want my guests to come from the direction that pops into their mind first, because to me, um, communication mm -hmm. is probably something different. The first thing I think of when I talk about communication is different than when you talk about communication. I'm dyslexic. So if I'm talking about communication, I'm probably not talking about something that's in writing. I'm mm -hmm. talking about a video. I'm talking about the way I present myself. I may be even talking about the way my images look because they communicate something. So, so when I ask you a question, it's mm -hmm. broad. You can just jump in wherever. That's the fun part okay. is I want all That's the cool. different perspectives. I, I didn't know if you, you wanted a uh, bias one way or the other, but, but absolutely touch both. But, you know, I'll tell you the one thing that, and I, I'll say this goes even more so with solopreneurs, people who are self-employed, they might have some, you know, staff, but they're not really like what I call a bigger company and all that goes with it. They might have some virtual assistants they work with, that sort of thing. What they are are one-armed paper hangers. You know, that term where, you know, you're 
<laughs> you're just so busy you don't have time to do all the little things you want to do to keep your business the way it ought to be and so following up communicating consistently over time is what keeps you memorable you know there are so many people where they go um hey what was um oh god what was that guy's you know, the guy he did charlie did he charlie's wedding was it where the hell we went remember we met the guy he was like so good he was so good and you're like it was me you it. and you go well yeah. wait a minute you can't say that because you didn't follow up you didn't stay in touch with people and it doesn't have to be terribly slick stuff it just has to be done consistently so that's a big issue uh, for a lot of people, they don't have a, a systematic way of doing it. They can't delegate it if they don't document it. That's another issue. So there's a, a lot of, and you don't need a complicated one either. I mean, I'll, I'll give you one real simple one any photographer could use. Um, and that is number one, you send out um, maybe twice a year, you send a thank you note. Thank you for being a good dad. Thank you for being uh, an example to the community. I, I saw your you know, your company was listed or something, and it made me think of the time we did the shoot and uh, how, how marvelous you were with the kids. Those little touches are huge. I mean, that's what makes people go, all things being equal, it's not equal anymore. It's an unfair fight, and you got the advantage. You know, you're bringing the gun to the knife fight, you know, <laughs> not, the, not, not the other way around. So a handwritten note is one thing. Once a quarter, call your people. Not you may say, oh, I'm so busy. You're, you should never be too busy for a quarterly call. And on the call, you don't call to sell another shoot or program or whatever. You say, by the way, I'm calling to see how you, hey, Peggy, how you doing? Seriously, how are you doing? Is there anything in your life that's not going the way you want? Any project you're working on that isn't quite happening as you wanted it to? Is there anyone I might know? I, I probably can't help you myself, but anybody I might know in my network of experts who could help you get that on its way again? You want to put in a swim? Yeah, I know people put in a swimming pool. Yeah, yeah. You want me to have them call you? Or you want whatever it is. I now am being like my mom, part of their business of life and living, and I'm helping them get a stuck thing moving again. If you do that only four times a year to each of your key people, they're going to go nuts. They're going to they're, they're going to tell you nobody else does this for me, and that's going to be a huge because that's number two. Number three is send them a. I call it a, a, a personal, uh, you know, insight email. People buy who you are as much as what you do. And this goes back to communication of, it, hey, you know, I'm a photographer. Well, guess what? I could go and find a bunch on Google and, you know, they're all going to say the same things. How do we differentiate ourselves? Well, if you can share who you are by sharing an event that shows the values you have or that you stand up for or you know this past weekend i was on a i was taking the you know the indian guides out for for a time in the woods and we we learned some interesting lessons sitting around the campfire they start to get a feeling for you as a person and that may be the only thing that differentiates you from all the other quote unquote good photographers out there before you know it all things being equal it's not equal again anymore so that kind of a little sharing that you can do that every six times a year and then once on the other alternate months send them a, a communication that is more about something of interest to them so keep a little file about people so if i find out let's say that you love figure skating for some reason i'm just picking that i can go in and when you're coming up in the database or the crm you know every other month and it says, oh, you know, Peggy, and figure skating. I'm going to go Google figure skating, and there's going to be some article or something somewhere. Maybe it's a video or whatever. And I'm going to say, here's the whole email, by the way. Hi, Peggy. Saw this. Thought of you. Enjoy, Bill. How long does that take? You can delegate that to a virtual assistant. But those little touches are the differentiators that make you no longer another where's Waldo photographer lost in the crowd of all the others. It's suddenly you become a person of interest to me. It's like, you know, the book, The Little Prince, you know, and, you know, if I take that, uh, if I make you special, does that make us both special to one another? Yeah, it does. And it doesn't take much, but it does take a game plan. It does take an intention and it does take a commitment. But boy, does it pay off big time, big time. And I love going into unfair fights, being the one who's got the unfair advantage, don't you?
I, I, I agree with you 100% because when I get a communication from someone, um, it makes me feel warm and fuzzy. Um, about two months ago, um, I bought some probiotics for my dog. <laughs> and when I Good tell move. you, I, I, I printed out their emails and I've like, I keep them like close to me because I want to remember, I, I know that it was a form letter. I get that they have thousands and thousands of clients, but when I tell you, I really felt like they wanted to know how my dog's poop was going. I believed it. <laughs> And that, you know what I mean? I was like, it just like their emails were just so personalized. Um, and it was just, it was stunning to me and it mm -hmm. made me feel special, even though I knew, yeah, they make all their clients feel special, but I'm one of their clients and I feel special right now. And yeah. that's what we should strive to do. And I, I love that. I, I love that. Just, Hey, thought of you. Bill, that's it. like that's it. You know that, how special that would make me feel if mm -hmm. I got an email about you know something random that you saw that reminded. In my mind, that reminded you of me. I didn't know that I came up on your database and I was the, <laughs> the one that got picked that month. In my mind, you just thought of me. Yeah, I have a I have a girlfriend from high school, and uh, she's not on social medias. And every once in a while, she just pops up a text message just thinking about you. And it's like, I know she is because she didn't see me post something. Like, she's genuinely thinking about me. And I know how that makes exactly. me feel. <laughs> and I don't know. Maybe she does that. Maybe she, like, has, like, a, a, a way to keep in touch with people. But whatever she does, it makes me feel so dang special. And, you know, yeah. it's been it's been quite some time since we've been in high school. <laughs> And, uh, you know, to get that, it just, it's something that's really cool. So yeah. communication, I, I love it. All right. Well, and, so, you know, and to do that, by the way, just one uh -huh. quick, you had to be a good listener to know what to send a link to. Otherwise you wouldn't have been able to personalize it. Right. So even just the action of sending a link that is relevant says, I listened to you. What you said to me mattered. What I picked up about you mattered to me. Therefore, I hope this matters to you. There's so many messaging going on in these kinds of exchanges that don't seem to appear right off the top of your head, but boy, they're always picked up on by the other party. And that's why when it comes down to it, it's not a fair advantage anymore. It's an unfair advantage and it's a good one for both parties. So when I was doing the, the maternity, newborn, three month, six month, nine month thing, I had mm -hmm. a lot of clients and they were all, you know, they would call because every three months they would call to make their appointments. And what I did, and again, this was years ago, um, but I would in my phone, um, in the notes, I would put their baby's name, uh, whatever happened in the session. If we talked about a dog, I'd put the, you know, I'd put all those things in the do in the notes. So when my phone would ring, as I'm clicking answer, I would click on the notes and I would know the baby's name. <laughs> I would know. I don't remember all that. There's no way. I had so many people in this Watch Me Grow Pro. There's no way I could remember everybody's name and everybody's baby. But I immediately, when I picked up that phone, I'd pull up the notes and yes. I'd say, you know, oh, grandma was sick last month. Is she doing better? And, you know. And all of my clients thought I genuinely remembered everything that was going on in their, their family. And a lot of times those little notes would jog my memory and I would yeah, remember things. They do. And um, all you need is a trigger and all the yeah. association comes back. Yeah. Very yeah. Good. That's, that is, that's, I, 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 now I'm feeling like, why haven't I implemented this into a CRM? <laughs> like now I'm feeling like, wow, I just like, right here. I'm like, yeah. I've kind of done all these things, but not really applied them in my daily, you know, life now. So you just mm -hmm. like gave me a wake up call. I'm so excited that Good. I don't know if anybody Good. else is getting anything out of this podcast, <laughs> but I am. I am. This is awesome, Bill. Okay. So life happens, life happens, real life stuff. So tell on yourself, tell us when you were not using your communication skills in a good way and it bit you in the butt. And how did you crawl back out of that hole? Yeah. This is an example. I'm sure well, there's yeah. only one example. I'm sure this has only happened. Yeah, to you right. Once. And, and I'm, I'm so happy <laughs> at your optimism that I was able to crawl back out. Um, 
I'm going to say that um, without getting too detailed about it, uh, I'm human and uh, sometimes we all get caught up in doing things other than what we know we ought to or we wanted to. And I kind of had a, there's a concept that says um, you can only withdraw so much from the relationship account uh, until you, you have to close it out because you've withdrawn too much. And, you know, that's why when you see the level going down, you try to put back more and, you know, keep it in the safe zone. And I, I had a very dear friend who I, uh, he was also a client and um, we just went our kind of separate ways. And this was before I'd really gotten smart about delegating a lot of this stuff. And I was like the one arm paper hanger myself. And long story short, uh, it turned out that he ended up doing a similar kind of business opportunity that I had at the time with a competitor. And I boldly said, you know, called him and said, I heard you went with so-and-so on a recent project. Why didn't you call me? And he said, why didn't you call me? Oh, ouch. Ouch. Oh, I mean, you know, sink into a ouch. hole in hell. Okay. You know, and I didn't, I didn't ever recover that relationship. I mean, you know, at some point, you, you know, I used to have a good friend of mine who was in the Air Force and he said, you know, in every maneuver, there's a, there's a point of no return where you're committed to the maneuver. And if you go, too far and you can't get out of it it's just gonna end badly and a few years ago the thunderbirds had you know one two three four and boom they all went in the in the desert because the lead made a bad mistake the others had to follow them and because the lead was going in they all went in and uh, that that that's kind of what happened so i look back at that and i realize i couldn't do it again that that is what gets you into a system to say, look, I've got a mind like a steel sieve, okay? I get it, I'm not perfect, but I can have a hard drive and I can have a CRM that will keep me on top of what I should be on top of. And if I can't even with that do it, then go out and get a virtual assistant and get someone to make sure you have redundancy in your systems. Otherwise it's like showing up for a shoot and going, oh, where's my other battery? Oh my God, I'm out. Oh, oh my God, here comes the bride. You know, it's like, no, not, not good, not good. So and, and I'm sure we all have that horror story as well. Yeah, once. I'm sure. Right <laughs> and then now. there, then there is a system in place. Yeah. And you know, I've been doing this professionally for 35 years, and I still have a checklist in my camera bag because we you we have like we're you human could have been brains. Doing this for 35 years, by the way. Good for you. Thank you. Thank you. And I have a grandbaby. <laughs> baby, a new great baby. Even um, better. Even better. <laughs> This is totally off topic, but let's be honest. Grandbabies are way better than parenting. Like if <laughs> if you if you can skip the parenting stage and just go right to grandparenting, yeah, that's, that's why the, the way to love it do so it. Much. Yes. Uh, anyway, but yes, um, it, you know, it's have systems. You got to have systems. We're human. Now, when you said that story about this friend of yours or or Some I guess client, not yeah. even a friend anymore, right? Well, Said, I mean, why didn't you we're not call angry me? at each other, but, uh, but he's not going to call me or refer me anymore. And that, that cost me a lot. And, but and, mostly my, my sense of what I should have been, but I, I didn't live up to my own potential. And that hurt. Yeah, so, exactly. And I know yeah. for me, there are times where I purposely go with someone else because I feel that person didn't do what they said they were going to do. And I, I don't know if I've thought about, I, you know, I don't want to be that person, but I mm -hmm. know that there's times that people, you know, make these great promises and they, you know, and then they go crickets on you. Mm -hmm. And then I'm like purposely go to a compet, you know, competitor to like not work with them. I don't ever yeah. want that. I don't want somebody to like feel like I made them feel that way to where they're like, I need your service, but I don't want to work with you and go to yeah. someone else. And, and that could be resolved with a simple reminder in your calendar. <laughs> it, yes. One alarm could have, could have solved that one alarm because your intentions were good. You didn't want to leave him hanging. Yeah. Your execution was poor, but that's the problem. Yeah. Poor execution doesn't help you any, even if that had all the best intentions in the world, right? Exactly, exactly. I, literally, one reminder uh, in your phone would have would have fixed that. That's crazy. All right, 
one last tip. What do you want our listeners to walk away with? What is one, one, we've well, given like gold mines and mic drops all along the way. So <laughs> one, one more tip. Well, apart from the uh, keeping in touch part, I would say that identifying the people that your people do business with will suggest to you the kinds of people who you can um, approach as partners. And it's much easier to manage, let's say, 10 partners than a thousand prospects. It really is. So if you've got those 10 people that, you know, when you when you're working with someone and you say, by the way, uh, do you do you use a veterinarian or, you know, if, if I needed some help with electrical, who, who do you know someone who comes to mind off the top of your head? Those people, if you start hearing the same people again and again in the same categories, those are the categories you want to say, by the way, don't suppose you know someone who, you know, does home theaters or whatever it is, because those people are in the face and in the place of you with people you want to have be in place with you. So getting to know who those people are, building a no love and trust relationship with them so that they don't have any concern about introducing you, uh, the better off it's going to be. And I'll just say this, my acid test for, you know, financial term, right? But the, the test for me of who makes a good partner is someone who, if I introduce them to someone and they spend time and money with that individual, then the client that I refer them to thinks a hell of a lot better of me. If I can find those people and I can suck up to them like a small storm off the coast of Catalina Island or Nantucket in my end of the town, then those people are going to make me look good. I won't have to do that much work, but I'll have much better relationships. And those relationships are the ones that are productive, not only for shoots and business, but also for referrals to others who could do something with the business services that I offer. That's my best advice. I love it, Bill. This was so insightful. Absolutely loved every second. Thank you so, so much for being on here. In the description, in the description is a ton of ways to get a hold of Bill. Make sure you go to his website. Um, I is your website's got a lot of information on it. Uh, it's it's a yeah, it's, we're, we're it's a very we're informative so website. Change there, but. <laughs> Well, okay. you don't change it before the podcast goes up. No, 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 no. We'll be good. We'll be good. <laughs> do you offer like a consultation, a meeting? What, what do you, do you have anything like that? Or just oh, go yeah. to your website. Yeah. You have a ton of downloads that are like really great. Yeah. Well, you know, those are some things from the, from the past, but they're all still relevant. Um, actually right now I, I do a program using up coach where we put people through a, a 12 week program that helps them get those uh, 15 or more introductions a month and we guarantee our results if we don't help you do that you don't owe us a penny now i'm either nuts as a bunny or sly as a fox and i'll tell you my friend i would put the money on the fox because i know what i'm doing and if you <laughs> talk to me <laughs> absolutely well thank you again and i know everyone enjoys this so thank you bye-bye